The humerus is a long bone that constitutes the skeleton of the arm. Its longitudinal axis is located obliquely, forming an angle of approximately 55 degrees with the horizontal plane in the case of equines. This angle is greater in small species since in them the location of the bone is less horizontal. The humerus extends from the shoulder to the elbow, articulating with the ulna, radius and scapula. We will describe the humerus of an equine. The proximal extremity is formed by the head, the neck, two tuberosities and a groove that separates them. The head of the humerus, the proximal articular surface of the bone, is much larger than the glenoid cavity of the scapula with which it articulates. The neck is the area of union between the head and the rest of the bone. It is only well defined in the caudal part. Craniolaterally to the joint area is the greater tubercle. In it, two parts can be distinguished. One cranial for the insertion of the supraspinous muscle and another caudal for the insertion of the infraspinous muscle. Medially to the joint area is the lesser tubercle, which gives insertion to the supraspinous, subscapular and deep pectoral or ascending muscles. The bicipital groove is located between the cranial part of both tubercles, a space covered by cartilage through which the tendon of the biceps brachii muscle runs. In horses, this groove is divided by the presence of an intermediate tubercle. The body of the humerus has a twisted appearance due to the presence of the large groove of the brachial muscle located on the lateral side and which holds the brachial muscle. On the lateral side of the body, below the greater tubercle, is the tuberosity of the teres minor, which gives insertion to the muscle of the same name. Distally is the deltoid tuberosity, where the deltoid muscle is inserted. Located on the medial surface of the humeral shaft is the teres major tuberosity. Here, the teres major and latissimus dorsi insert. The humeral trochlea, which is at the distal extremity, articulates with the radius and the ulna. It has a groove in its centre that continues caudally and forms a deep hollow, the olecranum fossa. This fossa introduces the anconial process of the ulna during elbow extension movements. Dorsal to the trochlea on the cranial side is the radial fossa. Finally, on both sides of the trochlea are the epicondyles. The medial is more prominent and gives rise to the flexor muscle of the carpus and digits. The extensor muscles originate on the lateral side. In each epicondyle, the corresponding collateral ligaments of the elbow joint are also attached. The humerus of ruminants, large or small, is proportionally more robust and more rugged. In the groove located between the major and minus tubers, the intermediate tubercle that we saw in equines does not appear. In addition, the greater tubercle is very prominent and slopes slightly towards the minor tubercle. The deltoid tuberosity is not as defined as in equines, and the trochlea forms a more oblique angle with the longitudinal axis of the body. The humerus of carnivores is long and thin compared to those of other species. It presents a smaller proximal extremity and a long and more stylized body. Perhaps the most characteristic anatomical detail of the humerus of dogs is the existence of a supertrochlear foramen in the distal part of the bone that connects the fossa of the olecranon with the radial fossa.